All right, a very good morning to you and you're welcome to the program. It's the 11th of March, 2024. And of course, we lift our hearts and voices with blessed anticipation and cry aloud and give to God the praises of our salvation. You're welcome to the program. And uh, we'll go through the headlines of the newspapers and later on I'll introduce a guest to you. Uh, start off with a daily graphic and it says, Electoral System Needs Reform, Samia Nkrumah. Government builds new drains against rainy season. Housing minister discloses 22% Ghanaian adults physically inactive. 13th African Games open in Accra. Aswasha Tawali's performance wasn't bad at all. MTN puts up uh, 19 million Ghana to this maternity. NICU blots in Kekta. The Ghanaian Times, 2024 election activity, voter registration starts May 7. No new CIs for polls. Election date remains unchanged. I shall give this task everything, Professor Upukwajiman. Captain Smart's poison claim, my husband was not poisoned. Kuma's widow insists. Ghana Malta vow to deepen cooperation. Daily Guide. Western Regional Minister wins 1 million Ghana cities defamation against Chief Multimedia. MPs OK $300 million loan. Baumia consoles John Kuma's uh, family. A Plus loses court case to Zane. Malta President visits NLA. The New Crusading Guide. Is anti-LGBT plus bill more supreme than 1992 constitution? It's a question. Reflections by Honorable Akusia Frema Osayo Pari on Wafa KK. Uh, Mahama in trouble again as he loses in later survey against Baumia. My husband did not die of food poisoning, Mrs. Kuma confirms. Westing Regional Minister wins one million defamation, one million Ghana cities defamation case against Chief Multimedia. Fastest woman in Africa retires after 50 years in NHS. That's at the top right corner of the new proceeding guide. The Insight newspaper, 24 hour economy. Fifi Kwete says Mahama policy, a transformative initiative for Ghana's collapsed economy. SMG salutes Ghanaian women on International Women's Day celebration. Lula, Israel, genocide and uh, racism on Brazilian corporate media. NHC President Ojehunhu Yao Jebi II received uh, commendations for donating computer to UMAT and two second cycle institutions. E levy is regressive as lower income earners pay the largest share. Research reveals the Herald. Heart failure killed John Kuma. Family refutes claim of poisoning and drugs. Captain Smart before police. Fidelity Bank and Bright Simmons face off in ECG's MD's inflated dollar controversy. Italian oil giant, any chalks, another success in West Africa. University of Ghana reports rubbish at Opuni trial. Mahama criticizes 450 million US dollar cathedral, national cathedral, says religious leaders will decide future. The Daily Statesman. Con direct Hydro Authority to expedite work on drainage. That's Kojo Kuma. Chief of Staff eulogizes Wafa KK. My husband didn't die of poisoning John Kuma's widow. Ghana opens African Games kick off in style. NPP, Nigeria's APC strengthens ties. Stephen in team. Okay, the daily searchlight. Stephen in team confers with executives of Nigeria's APC party. International Women's Day help fight against discrimination and injustices against women in land acquisition and ownership wild. And ownership wild as 
um, W I L T. In spite of W B I M F program, that's the World Bank I M F program, Mahama makes one point five billion dollar annual promise to buy local maize rice. GJA president elected as if FAG FAJ steering committee member. GMA warns partisan aspiring executives. The Ghanaian publisher, my husband didn't die of food poisoning. John Kuma's wife reveals 13 African Games spectacular display of Ghanaian culture at opening ceremony. Baumia has better credibility, MPP youth organizer. Gold fields, World Vision partner to expand WASH program. GJA president elected FAJ committee member. The custodian, speed up drainage works upon Kuma to Hydro Authority. John Kuma was battling with terminal illness. Wife reviews, Adelaide a Japan um, champions women's, women's empowerment at global conference. Ghana welcomes rest of Africa with pomp. And the top right corner, Parliament trains PPC members on new standing orders. Ah, the new finder, upon Kuma tasks Hydro Authority to speed up drainage works, Dr. Kuma battled a serious illness for long, but was only diagnosed in August 2023. Wife. Malta president comments positive impact of NLA operations. Spectacular opening of opening ceremony, colorful display of rich cultural heritage. <coughs> Delhi. Post. Mahama and Skind Kuro Sabin Rewu <laughs> Sabin Rewu <laughs> Weja uh, or Wajia of Bua. Hey, the uh, the Northerners will have to help me. Kuro uh, Sabin Rewu Wajia, the first of Bua. <laughs> Lordina Mahama <laughs> meets Kumatsu Market Queens to discuss their concerns. Allegations of murder and attempted murder through poison foods rocks MPP. And it comes with some pictures. Uh, we have Smart here, John Kuma here, one to me, uh, former finance minister, Sea Koto. We have a former education minister, uh, uh, yeah, I'll say do as well. And then <coughs> radio presenter who has been given account. <coughs> so okay, education minister I'll say do and then the radio presenter who has given a, an account over the weekend. Uh, I think the account was given on Friday. How the whole allegations of poison actually went about. And then with Captain Smart and Ohineba Nana Isiedu leading the allegations. Okay. So the top right corner also says that corruption has done Ghana immeasurable harm, Dome Level. And that's all we have for you this morning on the France pages. Let's take a break. We'll be back shortly. All right, welcome back to the program, and it's good morning, Ghana. This morning, I have Margaret Ansai, who is a member of NEC, the NDC, and then also a member of the communications team. Magoya, welcome. Good morning Thank to you. you. Annie. Good Thank morning. you for your time. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for and having me. And also, uh, the MPP Adentum Parliamentary Candidate, and also Deputy CEO for the National Youth Authority, Akusia Min, is also with us. Akusia, you're welcome. Good morning to you. Good morning, Annie. Thank you. It's been a while. Yeah. Where have you been? Oh, I've been up and about. <laughs> <laughs> the Mondays have, have been a bit tricky, but when I can. Explain your up and about. Oh, some Mondays just couldn't be here. I wanted to, but I just couldn't. Other activities. Lady, you're you becoming a bad girl. Though. Oh. Yo, you're becoming a bad girl. <laughs> I'm questioning you on national Bobby, I've been watching. I mean, when I can't make it, sometimes I tune in. And Lorata has been doing a fantastic job. I just hope you allow Ellen to come back as well. Oh, I, I haven't stopped Ellen to come. She hasn't been here in a while, so. It doesn't mean I've stopped her to come. 
Let's be back soon. <laughs> I'm, I'm asking about you. Being I'm missing well. I'm for well. a long time. Yeah, oh, I mentioned somebody's name. I was, that was when I was here with, with, with Mago here. This was when? I was, Should I check the date and tell you the last time? Which means it was two months ago that she was here. Right? Mm. Or six weeks or seven weeks. They're about. Mm -hmm. mm. So those of you who have been asking me why Akusi has not been coming, please. There you have a explanation. <laughs> All right. Oh, they've been asking you? Yes, of course. Oh, wow. <laughs> of course. I'm when sorry. it comes to you, they will ask me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I wish I could be here all the time. Mm. Maybe other days. You don't always have to be here on Mondays. You have to mix it up a bit. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'll try. We'll work on that. Anyway, thank you. It's good to see you again. All right, so let me just uh, do a quick one, uh, reminding you that MTN is getting, it's getting you rewarded for every single day. And uh, if it sounds too good to be true, you just want to try the Momo season. And there's something for everyone. So download the Momo app on Play Store or App Store and use Momo Pay for your day-to-day -day transactions uh, to a merchant either through the QR code or through the merchant ID and stand a chance of winning 1,000 Ghana cities weekly and other amazing prizes as well. So our members are also not left out of the reward. So receive payments and win. Keep using your Momo Pay on the Momo app and get rewarded. There's lots and lots of exciting prizes for everyone. And um, also, you want to log on to the Momo Merchant Application .gh. That's the site. So download your account all right momo merchant application dot mtn dot com for the account and you download it so it's momo season it says momo just with momo pay terms and conditions apply of course let me also now remind you of kel 360 toothpaste and if you're desperate of getting a toothpaste that will take care of the whole family uh they have the kits we have the one that for adults but there's also the one for a 360. So if you don't want to buy two different one for the family, let's get the 361 recommended for family toothpaste recommended. And it says toothpaste approved by Food and Drugs Authority. Kel 360 toothpaste provides you and your family with all round dental protection throughout the day with freshness. Kel 360 toothpaste is good for kids, children and adults. So let's your family be proud uh, and use the Kel 360 toothpaste. It says that the Kel Kids uh, 360 toothpaste and other products from Samara Company Limited are available on all markets and malls and provision shops. So call them on 0246 864798. 0246 864798. Kel 360 toothpaste, happy smile. Now, Lift and Elevators is also saying that enjoying the fruits of your labor is as important as enjoying the mansions of your labor. So the pains of climbing your stairs. Uh, when not ex exercising, could be challenging for all ages, but worry no more. Lift and elevators have got you covered with the best portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators uh, on the market. And it's a simple, self-supported and elevator for both homes and offices. Guess what? It can also lift your goods as well. For three days, they can install the customized one in your home just in case you want that, just within three days. Lift and elevator is located at Sakumono. On the line, you can call them on 0200-535-515 or send them an email to elevators at gmail.com for consultations and best solutions, easy medical movements as well. Now, Ironman Scientific is also reminding you of the health screening that is offering to the pub public. It says that they say who has health has hope and he who has hope has everything. So they're organizing the free health screening for the general public. And uh, this is a way of saying thank you to Ghanaians. What's more rewarding than this? Now, the free screening includes fertility test, prostate, stroke, diabetes, hypertension, fibroid ulcers, hepatitis B, and many more. The most important you want, maybe reason why you may want to do this is for hepatitis. Please try your best. Please, please try your best, okay? The medical screening is free, but patients with diseases, conditions will pay a token for their medicines and um, visit them at Dominia Snake Flats down, uh, Snake Flats down or Clago near Shaman Underbridge and all their branches across the country. You can also call them, uh, that's Amin Scientific on 020 722 or 0244 to book your appointment. Amin Scientific Medical Hospital, Allah Shafi says God is the healer. Okay.
I'm going to go into um, International Women's Day. I have women on the platform. I have issues bothering women. But one issue that probably a woman that is bereaved, that has taken a center stage now, is the wife of John Kuma. I, I think that um, officially we have the parties, uh, interested parties, I mean, clergy, uh, opinion leaders, sending their condolences to the family of the former deputy finance minister. But loudly to have spoken uh, lately is the wife of John Kuma. And if you check the front pages of most of the papers, the wife has made it to the front pages. My husband did not die of food poisoning. My uh, family consoles John Kuma. That's Baumia consoles John Kuma family. We have my husband was not poisoned. John Kuma, we do insist on the Ghanaian times. Um, we have my husband didn't die of poisoning, John Kuma widow. Um, my husband didn't die of food poisoning, John Kuma's wife. Uh, John Kuma was battling with terminal illness, wife reviews. We have um, Dr. Battled, but Dr. Kuma battled a serious illness for long, but was not only diagnosed in 20, but was only diagnosed in August 2023. And that's the wife talking, and then also maybe the death associated issues, allegations of murder and attempted murder through poison food, rocks and PP. Um, Captain Smart also in, in the mix because the wife is threatening to take her, him on. All right, so yeah, let, let me throw it to my guest because I don't understand all that is going on. But Akusia, um, Firstly, condolences to John Kuma and the family, and of course the MPP family as well. I, I'm not sure. Hmm. When I heard the wife talking, I was a little frustrated. And I thought, why are we forcing the woman to speak at this point in time? It's just, it's only been days. It's not even been like a week, days since the man passed. I'm not sure why we have gotten here to force the woman to be talking on almost every platform. Hmm. Annie, good morning to um, your viewers and to my supporters who have been asking you to find me. <laughs> <laughs> um, a special good morning to um, Adenta constituencies, um, especially our Muslim brothers who start mm -hmm. Ramadan today. Yeah. I wish everybody a very, very safe mm. and peaceful Ramadan. If I thought I would ever be sitting here to talk about John Kuma in the past, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, be, I, I wouldn't believe it. It's one of the hardest things this year. I mean, we literally haven't come to terms with Ofa Kwachi, Oman FM, Post a boiling point, a true party person, party faithful, party supporter. We haven't even come to terms with his demise. And then um, John Kuma's passing. What is most unfortunate is the controversy surrounding it. First of all, John is the last person that would want to have his demise um, create this sort of acrimony, for lack of a better word. What is most painful is that certain persons, without checking facts or whatever their reasons were, threw some spurious allegations out there, which subsequently have turned out to be untrue. What is hurting the most for me is clearly a partner, a life partner, who was aware her husband had a terminal illness. And with terminal illnesses, doctors will give you, some doctors will say three months, it can be three years. Some doctors will say three years, it can be three months. Sometimes people get lucky and live for a number of years. Um, there, were, there were some conversations that had gone on. You'd have, and this is not to even volunteer information that's not already out there. But I know persons who know who said they knew a doctor who had treated him years back when he had, he had a scare. 
related to cancer, right? The diagnosis wasn't, um, wasn't positive then or wasn't clear then. But then something of the sort, you know, had threatened his health. So the painful thing is him, all his contribution to the party, and trust me, he was clearly a rising star, young, even having his name, you know, mentioned as a potential running mate, even under consideration, 46, you know. It's, it's, it's an achievement on its own, but it's the pain of dealing with all of this. He was a, I was a, we're friends. Mm. He was one of the few people um, that you could call, you would pick up your call. If you couldn't pick it up, you return it immediately. I remember asking him for a favor, and it was on such short notice. And John actually drove his car to meet the persons I'd asked him to see. And he was just a humble, loving, hearty person. He executed his work professionally. I'd never seen John upset or speak out of turn. A few times he came to sit in your studio here. The way he communicates, he's not, it's not what you see being different from what you experience privately. What mm. you see him is actually what you get. Now, um, for the widow, I, I don't know if it's the word forced, but I think that when a family is going through its own grieving process, I could imagine that the minute somebody threw those, I don't even want to repeat specifically what those allegations were, but to say certain things, you can imagine the sort of pressure that came on her as well, right? First of all, for even family members who, are, who were aware of the true situation and knowing that if care is not taken, some innocent person somewhere is being blamed for something that or, um, they haven't done, or even creating an atmosphere of paranoia around gatherings, meetings, and whatnot. A lot has been said in the last couple of days. What we may also have to look at is maybe persons who hold public office on certain conditions may have to disclose. It's not part of our culture. It's not. But just to mitigate situations like this, maybe. I'm just saying so because I followed um, Lloyd Austin, Biden's um, um, defense secretary. In fact, that's what I was trying to look for my phone. Yes, yeah. Biden's defense secretary had prostate cancer. I think he was diagnosed not too long after the um, Russian-Ukraine war had started. And him thinking... It was a personal problem, not a public one. Despite their rules and what the law says, started his treatment and everything quietly. However, when it came to light, it was the U.S. lawmakers were literally calling for his head, and he had to hold a press conference. He publicly apologized, and in looking at it, I was, I, I thought about it in the sense of, this is my body. This is my 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 body battling a ravaging disease, and I need the peace and quiet to heal, right? But at the same time, given the position you are in, the lives of people are in your care. Decisions you take, <laughs> it's, 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 not it's not debatable that if you're unwell, often you don't take the right decisions. So maybe that's maybe a consideration that we may have to make in the future on disclosing whatever health um, ailments you have, which might be a problem. But then again, then again, he was a man of faith, you know. People have, have been known to turn around certain ailments and all that. His wife has, herself is also um, um, a, a, a pastor, a lady pastor. Forcing, I, I don't want to use the word forcing. I believe she needed, she felt the need to clear the air. It somewhat goes against our traditions as, you know, a widow doesn't, you, even with, you are going to greet them, they don't extend their hands to greet you, you know. Mm -hmm. They sit with, yeah. you know, in certain cultures, yeah. by and large, you don't extend your hand to greet, you wear black for how many, you know, you don't go out for six months to any fun activities or whatever. If whatever the case be, you have to step out, you'll be in black. But as much as we are entrenched now, 
cultural values, um, a situation arises which is most peculiar. And in this case, Member of Parliament, Deputy Minister of Finance, um, I mean, all these issues, unsubstantiated claims made on certain radio stations, people taking to make, um, you know, draw narratives, enforcing stories that didn't even exist, some taking a very little information and turning it out into a whole production. I don't think I can blame her for wanting to clear the air because clearly she knew. The pain was she knew he had a problem. She didn't want it to end this way in this particular time. Wanted to spend the rest of their lives together, see their kids grow and all that. Unfortunately, she's now saddened with doing and burdened with doing it alone. But you cannot be quiet to let the, the, the propaganda in itself, the false propaganda, which in itself is even a crime, is literally a crime to me to sit down and insinuate with the stories that we heard. The minute that story came out, and I could show you messages from, on my phone, friends I hadn't spoken to, I hadn't seen in years. We just maybe Facebook and texted, sending me messages, you know, oh, cozy, um, watch where you go, watch what you... And I'm like, ah. Is it that you hear something and ultimately believe it? We used to have a problem where it was just radio, and people literally believed everything they heard on radio. Then TV came, and anything people saw on TV, they believed it. Then social media comes. You know there are people who see a flyer and believe everything on there. Mm -hmm. Any story they believe. <coughs> so you, the minute you throw that out there, there are people who swear heaven and earth that whatever they heard first was true, when it certainly isn't. So I'll plead with some of our people who took to using this to settle scores with people they don't like for whatever reason and thinking it was the smartest thing to do. It certainly wasn't. It just created unnecessary problems, especially for the family, because now they have to look back at it and take a decision. And the thing about misinformation is you literally have to cure it in real time. The more you wait, the more it festers. And it could even trigger a certain reaction somewhere that you'd have certain people saying, oh, let's go and take charge and mess up or beat up some people because they supposedly did something wrong. That's how bad information is, especially when you sit behind um, um, a console, a microphone, you host a program, whatever it is, you just do not. The bedding on you is to ensure that whatever you're putting out there is as accurate as possible. Because in this case, it has a direct impact on the family. They knew he was unwell, right? Imagine those who didn't come to terms with what he was going through, now thinking that, okay, so um, it wasn't actually cancer like we thought. It was actually poison. That transition of doubt in itself is a burden on the family. It's trauma for them. So I think it's... it's I, last week was very hard for me, Annie. And John, may John, JK, as we love to call him, John Kuma, may he rest in perfect peace. I hope that the vision he had, the plans he had for his family, no matter what, as he's gained his wings in heaven, I hope he'll be an angel and look over his family. I won't even say the party primarily because it's his family and his kids and his loved ones directly that have missed him. As for the party and whatever matters, it can take care of itself. But his core family, his wife and his children, I think I, I, I saw, I, I can't pinpoint that the, they are young, they are too young to lose their father. It's unfortunate that all of this is going on. And these things are conversations that will come up. Parents will be having these conversations in their homes. Their, their, their children's friends would pick up on these things. And, you know, kids don't have a filter. Somebody might literally walk up to one of his sons and ask a question. You understand? So clearing the air is important. It, it's not convention for the widow to speak, but in this particular case, I do not fault her for wanting to clear the air, especially given the vile propaganda that was thrown out there. All right, so um, <clears throat> it's really, really not a, 
an issue to even discuss to start with because there's no official uh, report, doctor's report or confirmation on what exactly um, killed him. I don't like using such words <laughs> on screen, especially in the morning. So, uh, but, you know, uh, Mago, when a person becomes a public figure, we know that everything of yours becomes public. In fact, it is now our responsibility, which is why um, even though family is, um, comes foremost, it's always the state's responsibility when something happens to you. And I, I'm not sure where and how we got here. Like she said, it, it, it makes room for various rumors and things to fester because you've decided not to give information. And I'm just wondering, why do we do this to ourselves? What is wrong with being official with information, it's official. Let's get used to that culture, that once a public figure passes, we have a responsibility of telling the people who were taking care of him or her, because we were taking care of John Kuma exactly. and maybe other past leaders. But we find ourselves in a very queer hole. That when, when things happen to our leaders, people are left or the, the, the citizens are left naked. We can do whatever we like. And the danger is that we are even in a state of information age where people can create fake yeah, flyers, they can create even fake voices, yeah, they can create almost more. everything, yeah. everything. Even human beings, we have AIs. Yeah, yeah. We can create. Then you look at it and look at you think it's real. So it is where our leaders must start thinking about that we are now ahead of you. If you don't, you know, step ahead, we will simply mess you up. Because I find this really frustrating where the wife will have to be now talking. Good morning, uh, Annie, to your team, and then good morning to your cherished viewers. Uh, it's a sad day. I think that Thursday was, was indeed a bad day not just for his political party or his family, but as a country. Because uh, he died serving as a deputy minister of finance. And uh, it's so sad. And as you said, where, why did we get here, whatever it is? We remember when the late uh, Professor Mills died. Mm -hmm. His family even came out severally and said they had the autopsy reports. But we had very young people using it, whether for political gains or out of ignorance or out of clear stupidity. And it's gone on and on. Even when the family or the truth is out there, people will still find a way. Just this, this morning and I was at the waiting at the situational room, so I tried going on TikTok. Then I saw one journalist uh, from the Ashanti region. When I used to know him, he used to work with Kesvin FM, now I don't know. And he was even saying it publicly that he had a text conversation with the late John Kuma, and he asked him straight away, Honorable, I heard you were poisoned. And he said, yes, but uh, he's in Germany. He's he's recovering or taking treatment or and he said he was going to show that on tv i saw it on tiktok just this one at the situation i was like really who was that a uh, journalist in the ashanti region. a journalist yeah okay that he was going to show his conversation with the late because he he's trying to confirm that he 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 sent the message directly that i heard you were poisoned and the, the minister confirmed it and that he's in germany and he's recovering or something we've heard People very close to him also saying same. We've had Chairman Wun to miss personal aid. I've, I think I've also watched those videos yes. saying that even they were poisoned together, Wun to me and himself. As you said, I think because it's become a state property, when I say state property, like quote unquote, <coughs> immediately whatever the issue is, because Ghanaians will be interested. 
to be very honest, if somebody dies, I, I don't remember focusing on what really killed the person. It is the sadness and, you know, the, the, the melancholic situation. That's, you know, it, it just comes over you. You don't even extend your mind to what happened. Maybe later, I mean, after everything. But immediately when we heard of the death, there's people very close to him, personal aides, wound to miss aid. Everybody is talking. The media. And some are even saying, I've, there were other ones that they also said they said it on. They even said it while the man was alive and all that. I think the official statement should come out and put this all hello balloon to, to no, see. No, I, I actually think... And with the wife if, coming out to speak because of what is being thrown out there, I, I heard she's a woman of God. She's a lady pastor. I think my advice to her is that uh, you should just leave everything to God. I mean, you cannot explain yourself for everybody to accept it. What people have heard, they choose to believe or not. So as human and as a woman of God, that we all base our, our life on the scripture, I think in times like this, you don't need to talk. You leave it to your maker. Mourn your husband in peace. And let the good God that she worships, God will do the rest for her. If you try to do it on your own, it also, you know, after she, she speaks, somebody will speak, then we are still dragging her. I don't think she needs, she has the energy for this around this time. Annie, we are all human beings. We are mortals and we all go one day. When people die, there are lessons for the living. Professor Mills was over 60 years. And as of today, people are still saying he was poisoned, even when the family has refused. That's a lie. Jean but that's when, because we have decided not to make his auto autopsy official, report yeah. official. But the and family, you see, have, if the, I remember, the, the uh, within the Dr. Media. Kadman Mills said, he is the family head. He has the report. You know. Yes, and... And what happened to it? And it's out there. It's with the family. Oh, it's out there. It's, it's out there. It's but people will still make, you know, the point is that we should be careful with these things because you don't know when no, it will come no. to your family. What are, we, what, what are we careful of? When the official statement is out there, when family head is speaking, yet even quite recently, this issue came up again. And you know, when it is not around you, you don't feel it. But gradually, it is becoming something that all of us must not encourage. You understand? Because like you don't rumors. know. The rumors. The only thing you can do to stop the rumors is put official statements And this out. is where the family head of Professor Mills has come out to say that he was not poisoned. Just recently, you had people going on that tangent again. It, I, to I, what game I wanted, exactly? I wanted to see how the uh, defense... Um, that guy in the U.S. Lloyd yes. How the press conference, how they captioned it. But okay. I'm sure the producers will help me. Okay. Maybe when the video is ready. So but it's captured in their laws Annie. for them to state yes. specifically. When, okay. Even we don't have that. We do not have where that he, yeah. The person is still alive. And the person has a, an ailment. It, he or she is treating. Mm -hmm. Bad yeah. We are responsible for the person's health yeah you understand we are I we mean, are the parliament, are employers so yes yeah. parliament discussed this extensively last week i okay. think on friday on the floor where they were looking at how well they can ensure that members of parliament are taking care of mm -hmm. where we we have to have the good hospitals whatever it is because mm -hmm. most of the times i think when they are we're, we're battling with serious ailments they have to be flown out almost all the time yeah. okay so that's that's the video i don't know if you can see it on the screen how the headline is captured. Um, okay, take our headline of, oh great, great. So it says, uh, well, breaking news, Pentagon, Defense Secretary expected to make full discovery. That's the second video, uh -huh. this one says, Defense Secretary treated for prostate cancer, hospital, Lloyd Austin underwent procedure on December 2022. Mm -hmm. So this is how detailed, but of course by law, yeah. But we don't have we don't have it we don't have yeah. yeah so explicitly stated so we we find ourselves in a very and i think moving forward i mean we learn 
uh, things happening, maybe you need to take uh, lessons out of them. So moving forward, and this is happening right in the House of Law, where uh, members of parliament are dying in there. Lots of halo balloons around them. So I think uh, as time goes on as a country, we need to look at these things holistically. But to me, what is important is that we should not throw our morals away because of politics. You know, we should behave as Ghanaians as we are. I can first say, yemfa uwo enyanipa, yemfa yari enyanipa. So things like this, you should be mindful the way we go about it because it affects families, and it can happen to any of us. It can hmm. happen to any hmm. of us. And in life, yeah. life is a way that uh, we used to say that uwo uh, anasa, but uwo ensai. Your children, your family. I have been thinking from Thursday. I'm like, so if 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 you go, what happens behind you? Mm. We used to think that you don't really care, but you've left families, you've left children. What are the 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 conversations around? What are the? We need to just be good people. I mean, we need to be good people. <sighs> Live your life as if. You can go today. Touch lights. Help human beings. Help humanity. Because it's so painful. Human being is what God created that no matter the AI, no matter how we are building houses on Mars, we, are, we cannot create human beings. So it would be very sad if you hear that somebody has taken a soul away. Whether it is his timely death or somebody took him away. Ani, let's live as if... Let's live for the moment. Right. Okay, Let's so touch lives. I wanted to say something. Yeah, I wanted to agree with you that it's important that we head to a certain point where we disclose officially whatever, you know, a public official, should they, you know, exit whilst occupying a position, it has to be explicitly stated because there's too much surrounding it. Even, she said a few months back, alluding to the late... John Mills. It was actually his family that petitioned the president at the Jubilee House. It was less than three months ago. Mm -hmm. Members of his family with a queen mother who I believe whose locus is also um, equal to an Ibusia pain of sorts stating that they still have not seen his, the, autopsy report. the autopsy report. And it, for me I was shocked because if indeed his son has it, then disclose it to the family so they are very much aware. But it comes down to our cultural norms. Don't speak ill of the dead. Once the person goes, no matter what happened, don't talk about it. Even when people are unwell, they don't want to disclose what is wrong with them. I had a friend whose dad had a peculiar autoimmune disease. And for years, they were quiet about it. Then in the very tail end, when his health was spiraling out of control, she confided in, to someone who said, oh, her uncle had a similar problem. And the drug combination they put him on literally helped him. I mean, it was a thing. lifestyle, yeah. But he lived better. Let's say, for instance, lupus. I had a friend who died from lupus. But I know persons who live with it, take their medications every now and then, their crisis comes back. They are functional. But it's, it's more steeped in our cultural norms and values than um, what actually is better as we are advancing, as there's, as there's more exposure, as we are enlightened, we need to shed some of the secrecy yeah. but you know and, the, and thinking, the stigma. I, because I'm, when somebody is unwell, at, it's almost as if everybody wants to shun yeah, them. I, you thinking, don't want them to have a job. I, I'm thinking you don't want them to do this things. kind of secrecy about our health conditions was very beneficial in certain times yeah. or some time past. But today, we can't say the same thing. It, it, it's, there's it, a lot it, of superstition, it, hasn't and and it, I, I find it also so hypocritical. You know, in Akan we say, If you don't sell your sickness, you you're not. This. Yes. So if we have this adage in our parlance, and then we're practicing otherwise, is that not hypocritical? Mm. Mm. <laughs> the the um when it comes to our, our proverbs and uh, <laughs> I mean. sometimes we. I, I, I just, but you see, 
this is a situation, we'll come back to this again, God forbid, who, whoever it will be, God forbid. But we'll, we'll have the conversations, but we'll move it forward beyond uh, the disclosure of your health status, especially if you have a terminal illness or you have been diagnosed. I think you need to disclose it. Because whatever position you occupy, it's only a matter of time. Something could happen to you while you're in office. It also means that it's a double-edged sword. You, you disclose and the powers that be will feel that go home and take care of yourself and let's put somebody who is fit in that position. We have this chief Tansi minister who wrote, I remember wrote to government that oh, his situation is not allowing him to you know, work as he's expected mm -hmm. to. So he wanted to resign. He was not being given the chance. The government held him on until oh, the point I, where I, I, I'm not we aware he wrote a letter. We, I'm not aware he wrote oh, a he letter. Oh, he wrote to the to government. Oh, he did not. I don't think he wrote. What did he um, do? But he's been let go of that position, I think. Recently. It's not so oh. long ago. He resigned oh, himself. He resigned himself. Yeah, he, he resigned himself. Yeah, he resigned himself. But you are right in the sense Yes, that uh -huh. what I heard was he resigned and they didn't want to accept the resignation letter. Really? Yes. Oh, it's, it's a hearsay. Okay. If you don't accept it, nobody... <laughs> I mean, it's all part of some of the things we hear. But bottom line is that conversation that do we now put it in law that you'd have to disclose. So, for instance, even for our late president who passed, it was a conversation of him having a certain form of cancer. As to what cancer he had, we, we, we are not even aware. You know. And also, it, it, it's, it's sad for me because there are several activities John was engaged in the last couple of weeks. There are those who spoke to him. Like, I spoke to him just yesterday. Oh, we just commissioned something, you know, this project. Oh, we're in a meeting working. And it's like he was showing up and being brave. And it's sad that, like Mago said, you, 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 you don't know, the best you can do is be a good person. But it comes to the implications thereafter. If something should happen to you whilst you're occupying the seat. You have people, look, in Ghana, let me state this. In Ghana, as far as I'm concerned, nobody dies a natural death. Have you realized this? Mm -hmm. In Ghana, nobody dies a natural death, especially if they're a young person. There's always something that is ascribed mm. to the mm. person's exit because, by and large, we expect people to grow old and die. So the person was unwell. Even there are people that fall sick. We, we are not even aware they are sick. And then when you hear, they are gone. And that's, that's the state of what happened last week with a lot of people shocked. And then seeing the transitions in his health, especially in his, the weight loss, you know. I mean, I had pictures of him. The last time I saw him, it was different from what the last picture, which you was saw. somewhere last week, Monday or something. So it's like I had no idea this was going on. Because sometimes, you know, technology makes life. You'll be talking to somebody, chatting online, whatever. If you haven't seen them physically, you wouldn't have an indication of what they are going through. But if we have to put it in law, I think that it will help clear the air and sanitize the conversation, especially after a person. <coughs> unfortunately loses their life to a terminal illness or any other um, condition? Well, um, I, always, I always say that uh, leadership is cause. Anything else is the effect. But there are people who don't go by that school of thought. I still stick with it. That leadership is cause. Anything else is the effect. If you refuse to put up information, the people will give you the information. Yeah, because they also have personal relationships with these people. They pick up information the way they like, how they like, through any means. And then they put it out the way they like. Most of them are not even within the traditional media, so they are not restrained. And, and, and uh, you know, social media is very free. You know, in some countries, they even ban social media. They don't, use, they don't allow them to use mm -hmm. it. Here we allow, and we just watch people, you know, put up anything and everything. So I think that it's a matter of hypocrisy. We are just very hypocritical people, you know, in this country. We say one thing, we do another we say one thing. We, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure what is happening. And it's, it's all by, you see, the leaders, you are the people it's happening to. You will die today and will mess you up because you have decided to lead us anyhow. So when you die, we'll treat you anyhow. That's what's happening, you know, in this country. So let's, you know, on this note, we'll take a break. We'll be back with some other discussions.
Radio, welcome back to the program. And uh, the discussion continues, but let me remind you, Akosu Menu and uh, Margaret Ansay are still with me in the studio. So what does wealth mean to you? And do you want to live like a tycoon? Remember, who's got the mula, got the power? Ghana's newest lottery game draws live on Adam TV, 9 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. daily. Now pick up your phones and tablets and computers, of course, and download the Game Power Games app on Play Store. You can also play on the website. It's at www.gamespargames.com dot com or dial star nine four six hash on all networks just choose numbers from zero to nine it's easy to play and easy to win charlie make we play this game and make some mula nobody beats our all team ghana game by games more mula more power and it's regulated by the national uh lottery authority not for persons under 18 so play responsibly and beshwe cash out says that i so cool and um Betway is giving you more control over every thrilling bet you place. Enjoy the biggest and most reliable cash outs in Ghana on Betway without any hustle. Sign up today at betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions, of course, apply not under persons under 18 and is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Betway, get way more. Blue Jeans Energy Drink is also uh, has been on the Ghanaian market for over 20 years. We already know what it does for the body. It contains vitamins and nutrients like vitamin B2, B3, B6, B12, as well as taurine and guarana, and which are known to boost your strength and energy as well as promote high performance and endurance. Blue Jeans Energy Drink has been tested and tried. It is indeed the best. Blue Jeans Energy Drink is for bold and active men and women. So go on and grab the cold can empower your day blue jeans energy drink is provided on bulk purchase budget and carry budget cash and carry limited on 0208-128-190 and 0550010000 that's a contact for you now nibs future is leadership summit is ready and uh, it says the future is here where is the leadership and as we're talking about leadership and the laws that you need to create, carve, to manage the kind of population you have. <laughs> the maiden edition of the Future Ready Leadership Summit dubbed Re-Imagining re, uh, uh, Leadership in a World of Unrelenting Change with every inspiring speaker such as Sir Sam Jonah, Dr. George Jukum Donko, Professor Kwekwe Chahenejima and many distinguished speakers built to speak on that day. The summit will come off on the 13th of March 2024 at Mervyn Peak Ambassador Hotel, 8 a.m. So you know where to be, right? At 13th, just about two days from, no, yeah, two days from today. So Wednesday, don't miss it. And for your tickets, if you want to be a part of this, contact them on 0267-349-1475. Or 244 And that is uh, the contact to call to be a part of the Ready Leadership Summit that's dubbed Reimagining Leadership in the World of Unrelenting Change. Okay. So um, I think the, com the conversation about uh, affirmative action is still on where uh, we have a programs officer of the Center for Democratic Development, CDD, Vera Abina Ado, has emphasized a crucial need for affirmative action bill in addressing the horrific, uh, historical marginalization of women in decision making roles. Madame Ado uh, underscored that women constituting more than half of Ghana's population have long been excluded from significant decision process. Uh, decision-making process. She highlighted that such exclusion not only hampers development but also undermines the principles of democracy and inclusion. The Affirmative Action Bill recognizes the marginalization of women and for a very long time women who make up uh, more than half of the population have not been part of decision-making. This undermines our development, democracy and issues about inclusion, participation among others, she said on Sunday. She was speaking on Joy FM, but also a uh, human rights lawyer, uh, MP Sosu, also says, okay, let me read from here, Deputy Ranking Member on Parliament Constitution, Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs, Francis Xavier Sosu says, 
has addressed misconceptions about the affirmative action bill. The Medina legislator noted that the passage of the bill into law will not displace men in decision-making process. <laughs> so you know there's a discussion and the concern. <laughs> I don't know if it's coming from the men quarters or it's probably coming from the quarters of people who are also interested in men's rights. <laughs> so it says, quote, it will be an erroneous conception to think that affirmative action bill seeks to displace men. And you know we have a historical wrong. And when laws are going to be made, you first want to identify the mischiefs uh, the law seeks to cure. He said, highlighting the uh, existing gender disparities. Mrs. Osu acknowledged that despite women uh, outnumbering men in Ghana, they still lack equal presentation and decision-making power. He attributed uh, this to the imbalance to cultural, historical, and social factors, emphasizing the that legislation is the key to rectifying this long-standing issue. So, Mago, you, um, I'm sure... Mama doesn't think that uh, uh, Nana Jane is coming to replace him. <laughs> so, so he has Aye. given her an opportunity. Aye. Right. That's, that's true. And uh, mm. on Friday, as the world has decided that we celebrate uh, women internationally on every 8th of March, Friday, the NDC Women's Wing uh, have the program you know, and the theme for this year is Inspire Inclusion. And from the International Women's, you know, their website, they said they, they, they encourage everyone to recognize the unique perspective and contributions of women from all walks of life, including those from marginalized communities. Then they, they went ahead and said, it is not just about women. The organizers noted, we can all challenge gender stereotypes, call out discrimination, draw attention to bias, and seek out inclusion. So this year's team, I think that's why they did a sign like, you know, trying to bring uh, everybody on board, irrespective of your background or wherever you are. And even men, you know, we have he for she. And um, Sosu and then uh, yeah, the right speaker, the, right. He, yeah, the right speaker, Honorable Kingsford Suman Bradbin, They've been the he for she because when they went on this affirmative, I think the committee went for meetings. They are still making uh, amendments to, to the bill. And I think the last time they went for the final one, there are a few things that they are looking at. So we are praying and hoping that when it comes to the floor of parliament, I mean the plenary or wh wherever, it will go to all of us. I mean, uh, reps <coughs> in parliament should just affirm it and let it be passed into a law because it's, it's been there. I think when I heard of affirmative action bill, I, I, I was not even up to 10 years old and today I am growing into an old woman and we are still talking about affirmative, affirmative action bill. Years and over, yeah. So, I mean, we should all come together. And thanks to the, to the he for she men who are always supporting us. Honey, <coughs> it's, it's, it's Women in position, most of us can attest to it, that uh, women are very compassionate. Women think about the basic human needs. You know, even in the house, whilst the men are looking, going up and down, waking up early, you know, struggling to build, to build this, blah, blah, blah. The woman is taking care of the food, daily meal, water, the basic things as when you come to governance, we will see the social amenities. So on Thursday, when President Mahama met the National Executive Committee of the NDC and introduced or mentioned his running mate was, the way, he, the way he started, he started with certain adjectives. And to, 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 I was surprised that his choice was based with data, facts, there were research both international and local, mm -hmm. you know, and the adjectives and stuff he used. So when he was mentioning the adjectives, I was sitting there, I said, hey, eh, me and I, you know. <laughs> Why? Did you meet the... The <laughs> whole was <laughs> running it. <laughs> international. <laughs> you know. International <laughs> I was like, oh, when you mentioned this, he went, hey. Then the data, you know, this, this research was that, I mean, my, my joy was that, it was done uh, on at 11... At what point did you think it was you? You, I'll come back. Honey, 
it was it was the research was done on eleven abled people. Eleven oh, potential animates in the NDC. All the the, the as an say they're cuckoo dams. Eleven. Ah. The potentials were numbered eleven. Eleven. Oh wow. Yes. I thought it was just about three. No, or no, no, only eleven two. people. Like eleven. I can think can you get a chinia brimpo? Eleven. And there was an international research, there was a local research, and the woman came out strong. That doesn't mean the ten Other were women. not, but you know, in life we must all believe in destinies. I didn't see Profe uh, uh, Professor Jenana, I didn't see her lobbying, or even when she became education minister. So from that point, I'm like, women, we need to build our capacity. Honey, whatever you are good at, focus on it and do it. And nature will identify you. Because we never saw her lobby for anything. By the end of the day, she got, she became an education minister on merits. She became the first. Maybe other people lobbied for her. Okay, Behind but I, I'm talking about her okay. as a person. You know, gone were the days where when you see a woman in a certain class, there's this stereotype or this, you know, that comes with it. But not even a madman can mention that about Professor Jane Nana. Excuse my, my, my language. Because we know she's a woman of substance. She, she comes to the table with much dignity, credibility, and all that. So, I mean, it was, it was, it was all fun. People were not too surprised. But, I mean, the, the moment was, was so joyful. Were you disappointed that you were not mentioned? I, I might be in the ten. Maybe number three or number four. I'll go and find out. <laughs> Next in line, clearly. <laughs> Next time it will be you. <laughs> so, Ali, and uh, we, are, we are grateful for President Mahama for mm -hmm. setting. I mean, there have been other political parties where they, they, they named running mates as, as females, but this is a realistic political party. Not, no disrespect to Apalu, PPP, and the rest, but realistically, NDC is a party that is forming government and naming a woman as running mate by the special grace of God automatically would turn her into a vice president of this country. And this is history. So we thank uh, President Mahama, the Council of Elders, the NDC National Executive. Uh, we thank all of them. And the Ghanaian who told us that we needed a woman mm. to be mm -hmm. a running mate mm. to uh, President Mahama. There were women group, uh, uh, what's the name? Is it a lawyer's group? They had been pushing for women running mates for both political parties. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they, uh, they, I, I think I'll get the name. Yeah, so we have, we have, we have set the pace. Others can also follow, mm. bring us women. Because I mean, in, this, in this current state of our economy, uh, quote in quotes, Ghanaians are hungry. Ghanaians are hopeless. Ghanaians are crying for hope. <coughs> and we know, as women, if we not even use our sex, for example, our mothers. You give a woman small ingredients and honey, she will turn it into something very delicious for the entire family. You wouldn't even notice that <coughs> there was no meat or something in it. So, I mean, this is a woman that is coming into governments where Ghana's resources, uh, we, don't even, we don't even have it. She's coming in when we have just little. And we are praying to God to give her the wisdom and the tenets that is put in women. Because women are like magicians. Somebody calls us, women act like the Holy Spirit. We, we, one of my professors said, if you are talking to a woman, bear in mind that she's recording you. Not literally recording you, but whatever you say. In 10 years time, 20 years, she will play it back to you. Yes. So this is a gender that we are bringing on board in, in trial times. Very crucial moments. And aside her academic prowess, aside her, her, you know, motherly, you know, kind of, but she is a prudent woman who can partner President Mahama to make her home, home as in literal sense, country. So, so this is what, it, the group is FIDA. Okay. So this is what it said uh, in its release uh, that I received some time back. It says that... Um, Okay, fortunately, the so-called smaller parties have, have been models of more inclusiveness in the selection of running mates, such as Progressive People's Party, which selected two women 
uh, in women, the late Eva Loco, and 2012, Ms. Bridget Jokwenuku, 2016, as one inmate. And now the Convention People Party also selected Nana Kusia from Puma uh, II as the running, is running mate in 2012. FIDA is not just suggesting uh, that women should always be relegated to the running mate. It is important to start this inclusive yeah. process as ultimate. As ultimate. Uh, and then this is what they said about uh, the NDC. The selection process of female candidates is through the political parties and until recently, the National Democratic Congress NDC in 2020 also selected its first female running mate, Professor Nana Jane of Pukwajiman. Most of us actually write her name Jane Nana. She doesn't like that. Nana Jane. So I'm telling you from today, this is from writing Professor Jane. She says her name is Professor Nana Jane of Pukwajiman. So this leaves uh, the incumbent New Pretoria Party trailing as it has to uh, elect a female running mate. Both global and national legal requirements are clear on the rights of women to participate in elections uh, on an equal level as their male colleagues. And it is a shame that after 60 years of independence, Ghana has no woman vice president. And you see there also the, the challenge with us as Africans, because we are still growing, we haven't even the developed countries, I think they also have their challenges. It definitely comes with stereotyping and stuff. But you see, when a woman is mentioned, then quickly, people are asking, is she married? People will begin. It's so easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, have you <laughs> ever heard anyone asking a man who wants to contest for a position, are you married or how many wives do you have? Or, you see, then we, when I watch uh, the, the, was it the chunk level? Angela Mikkel. Okay. You see the way the woman appeared. If she were in Ghana, Annie, we will look at her jacket, her shoes, her bags. You see, we have we should Annie, we should we should go beyond that women. We should go beyond that as society. Let's look at what the woman <laughs> And it's serious. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you see, you uh, you see a woman I'm, then I'm, 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 then immediately I am already in the in a, in a murky situation, you see, where I'm just reflecting. Uh -huh. yeah. mm. You see, so you let me bring your imagination to bear. <laughs> as soon as the woman comes, <laughs> and you're looking at her shoe, oh my what design, this one, her hair, her makeup. Honey, does that put food on the table? The part the, that is, is annoying mostly is the moment you have the a women relationship. Themselves who, who do the that. moment you have a friendship with a fellow man. It, people just decide to build their own. I mean, the, the start, and, and you see, when you, when you speak about sexual relationship, about men, it's not as demeaning as women, as assigning it to women and calling women names. They will that even is go beyond. Even, uh, uh, has she given birth before? Oh, this one, she doesn't have children. That's why she be. I you think see, women should start going to court about things like I mean, that. I mean, it's, it's so, so. Because it's abuse. Because we have lots, we have, we, we, are the, we have the numbers. Honey, I always, I still don't understand why. Growing up, I was telling my dad that I will not sit down for anybody to take decision for me. I have to be part of decision making. Because, Ani, women, we are over 50% in this country. But look at our lawmakers. We are just 40 in parliament out of 275. So imagine somebody making laws and policies for you who do not really appreciate who you are or where you are coming from or how you feel. And you understand? Mm. So, women, we are, please, let's all support each other. The women, I think it's just a slogan, women supporting, we have even days that women we, we, we women. women supporting women. <laughs> I, you hear that a lot, but Annie, you come out and most but, of but female, can you what, imagine this that? This is what I say that sometimes Lara disagrees with me a lot because she thinks that I'm not for women. She, she, she's misbehaving <laughs> on my phone now, my head. <laughs> Okay, she hasn't said for me yet. You see, but, but you mostly, know, eh? Sometimes, mm -hmm. women, when men say women are their own enemies, I disagree. I don't like it. I don't like that phrase. But sometimes there are women who show clearly that I'm they don't you like their fellow example. women. You know, most, when you speak to most female pieces, mm. their challenges are their women's organizers. <laughs> I swear to God. When you expect that this is my own, let me rather project her. 
Most pieces, if they will be candid with you, they will tell you, my God, you need to come to my constituency, my women are going to... I'm like, really? So there are some that, you know, because I contested election, some I'm buddies with some people, so I'll call them. Oh, how is the constituency? Because I need to really find a way. And I'll ask, how is your PC doing? Uh, the comments. Then you realize that, Charlie, there's a problem. There's a problem. And Ra often the problem is not... A personal issue. No, no, that no, 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 no. It's it's totally. Oh, I mean, like, there was I I there like was it. there was an incident where a woman was seriously against a certain woman's candidate, child, whatever, all because she said she advised a woman and she didn't take it. <laughs> then I'm like, when did advice become binding onto anybody? Do you know that when you wear a shoe, someone can hate you for wearing a shoe. No, and someone the person can hate who can you hate you because you is, dress well. Yes, or you speak well. Yes. That's, Ooh, that's and enough. the person who will hate you is a woman. Or oh, you're confident in yourself. In itself. Ah, some, someone was <laughs> telling me that a woman called and said, the way you have been wearing too much gold, you need to reduce it. Why? Meanwhile, I haven't even noticed whether so, the person so is wearing so gold or diamond. Is but, watching, but truth be told, she should understand our, that. My, my fellow co partner is a light gold pal. Can you write? Can you write? Can you write? Let's see you. Can you write? Can you write? Can you write? Can you You know, we have one woman who really loves to wear gold and the, the pendants. You know, she said somebody called and said, the way you wear too much gold. Why? <laughs> Even, so I was looking at her, I said, ah. So I started holding, and I said, so how much does it they weigh? They should go into Gross. the Arabian homes oh. and see how <laughs> their women, they, 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 they just stay home and it's just gold. So and you, you see, that is what we're you, made see of. you see women going against women mm -hmm. over very trivial yeah. issues. Sometimes yeah. there are no issues at all. Mm. Even your hairstyle mm. alone. Mm. But that is why women doing communication, I always tell Samida, women doing communication, you need to treat them special. Because, Annie, mean, before you come on set, you know what we go through. A man will just come, you put powder on their face, and they come to sit down. Today, I was asking myself, <laughs> have I brought this shit on? Uh, <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? You can't. No, yes, yes, you, are you can't really not repeat. No, no, yeah. no, 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 you no cannot. Budget for this. Somebody oh. will ask you whether it's your you uniform. Do. When we finish, mm. I will send you a screenshot sure. of a girl who attacked me on social media because, because she said I wore black Monday, Tuesday I wore black. Why am I wearing black the same through dress throughout? She really insulted me. <laughs> Annie, the reason why I changed wearing, Look, I, I, I changed to locks. Because the weights that you have to maintain. maintain. When you come after, I have packed ma mannequins like I'm... You see, I'm like, what kind of life is it? But men don't go through this. <laughs> Annie, you? you cannot repeat dresses. From 2020, I have not repeated a dress to but today. But when the lights go up, those mannequins, they can scare you. <laughs> <laughs> you see, so women go no, through a lot just to, is, just to is, come is, out and help society. I'm you telling you, child going, going to the bedding look. The way, you and see, they, they do like that a lot. <laughs> Annie, the men can have four outfits. They don't One care. black. One white, one grey, one brown. You see, brown, even one trousers, all you need is maybe three same. kinds of shirts, different kinds of shirts. <laughs> so, Annie, what, what I'm trying to say is that women go through a lot oh, to okay. come out to serve. Mm -hmm. And I'm pleading with women that, you see, we, we, we have the numbers. Let's stop being petty so that we can get more of us representing us, working for us. Who would rather, Annie, my students, the kind of messages they send to me. I'm wondering if they had all males mm. as their lecturers. And it will be very difficult because some are very personal. And because she's a woman, as soon as she mentions it, Annie, I either have an experience or I know about a sister who had it, so I can give solutions. So let's help, let's encourage each other to bring more women out to come and serve. So to be very honest, on behalf of Ghanaian women, the NDC women, we appreciate President Mahama a lot for repeating and you know, before he was coming to mention the name, he said, after all the accolades and uh, adjectives and all that, then she said, still. So when he said still, the whole room went like, because when you say still, it means that the thing is there. Yeah. And after still, he said maintain. Oh, <laughs> then we didn't even wait for him to mention the name. It was, it was such an admirable situation. And it was, it brought, it, I, you see, you come alive as a woman. You come alive seeing a woman of substance, and, and, and to remind you, that's, that's also because of the, women, the woman involved. 
I mean, uh, Professor Nana is someone that you cannot doubt her achievement, her exactly. credibility. Exactly. And, and that's the effort, and that's what the point I always want to make. Some, that somebody women, was making this it's argument not, with it's me. It's not the fact that because, excuse my... You are a woman, No, so. no, because you're going through menstrual cycles, somebody is going to con Treat consider... You yes, consider your menstrual yes. cycle and your changes you need to emotions. You need to prepare to meet the opportunities. You, yes. Yes. you need to prepare you to meet You should know your weaknesses yes. and then put them forward ahead of you. And, and work towards it. Mm -hmm. So you don't think that they'll favor you just because you're a woman. Uh, someone no. was someone from the other side was making an argument when I spoke about her credibility and what I said, eh, because the woman is not a typical politician. If she were to be a typical politician, there will be skeletons in her in her wardrobe. I said oh. I said, we some you are even talking about skeletons. You might even have a whole cemetery in your wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I mean the point the point, is, the point <laughs> I mean, the point is that, can we separate people's personal lives and see them for who they, what they bring on board? Mm. And we are all human. Even experts are fallible sometimes. We, are, we, we accept our fallibilities, I mean. But can't we look at the brighter side and forget about those things? An old man said he's lived with his wife for over 40 years, and the reason why he was able to do that is to act blind. To the, to the weaknesses Excesses. of the wife. So because he's blind to them, he doesn't even see them at all. Right. And you can live together. So women, we go through a lot to give you service, and we expect that you support us. We expect that you push us. When we are wrong, Prophet Nana, uh, Professor Nana Jen said it on Friday. He said, when you hear the good things, I mean, let's thank God for it. But when you hear the bad things about me, come and tell me. Mm. Because I'm human, I need to change. Mm. And I think this is how we can build society because I mean, if a woman is empowered, the whole the entire household is happy mm. because she will provide. A woman will not be in the house where children will be we on the streets. Hungry. We need to empower ourselves. Mm. And women, let's help each other. And it, by so, please, Professor Nana Jinopokwa Jemai. Now NDC has their running mates. We have a team, President Mahama and Professor Nana Jinopokwa Jemai. We are pleading that you vote for this team. Make President Mahama the president of this country come December 7th. And Professor Nana Jane, the vice president of this country. And let's give you the kind of leadership that you need. Mm. The leadership <coughs> that will clothe you, that will feed you, that will take you out of the streets, that will treat you with respect. That is all that we are asking. Right. Thank you. Professor Nana actually once said that... Um, once the door is open to you, you keep it open and mm -hmm. allow mm -hmm. others to also enter. It was such a powerful comment she made. I'd never forgotten about it. So it's a, I, I guess it's a good thing for all women across, you know, uh, I'm a going country. To look for and political parties. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look for their list. Can you imagine Akusha being mentioned as a running mate? She'll be in the list, I know. In which way? <laughs> Where which planet are you? Are you mad? <laughs> Where in my house? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Um, and first of all, congratulations to um, we say Madame Jane Nana. We we are used Nana to Jane. Nana Jane. We been saying Jane Nana. Mm -hmm. ah, um, she, she it's always Nana. a local first. Yes, Nana Jane. Um, I believe in 2020, when she was first announced, there was a lot of buzz and excitement. Um, the last announcement, unfortunately, coincided with yeah, the same day, the yeah, day exactly. of our brother. Uh, so, uh, not a lot of it didn't get as much traction. But I would commend them for maintaining her as a running mate because it looked like there was a lot of pushback. Because some comments about performance and numbers and whatnot, some making the argument, do you want to tick a box or do you want to win an election? And often these are the considerations that often come when you're making political decisions. So I kudos to them for maintaining her. I believe it's clear now, without a doubt, the pairing that is going from their side going into the election. It's important for good women to occupy spaces in the right political party. I'm not setting that um, that's where she belongs. 
but that's where she's chosen to be. As to whether she realized the dream is a different conversation because come December, we know that the President of the Republic of Ghana, as declared by the EC, latest by the 11th of December, will be Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. International Women's Day inclusion and matters are rising. Um, you know, Margot mentioned a lot of things because she centered it around our space, which is a political space. And when it comes to political space, I'll tell you that half the things she was saying here, she was pulling back. At least we can agree on some of the challenges we have, but she, we pull back a lot because in as much as you want to even show vulnerability, you're going to be judged by how vulnerable you are on what you share being the challenges you face. Yeah. I would take a moment to acknowledge some phenomenal women in the MPP because that's currently in the political space that I occupy. The First Lady, Mrs. Rebecca Kufuado, who took a chance with me. And I've learned so much from her and it's actually impacting on my leadership, especially at the constituency level. She's been an amazing mentor. And you know what, when you say leadership is cause and effect, you learn most from her just by watching how she goes about her things. You won't necessarily, people think mentorship is, I'll call you Annie Monday, hello Annie, don't wear black again, no. you are black on Monday, so don't wear black on Tuesday. No, it's how she engages, how she takes decisions, how she reacts to people. When put in a certain difficult position, how she maneuvers. That's how best you learn from good leaders. She's been a, a rock to me. She's been unwavering. Look, in the political space, when, you, when people take an affinity to you, you'll be surprised the number of people that will run to them trying to sow confusion, trying to paint certain right. stories and whatnot. Tell them a lot about you. I've nev there's never been a situation where she called to say, Cozy, this person. In fact, I, I also don't like to give opportunity for people to run to people to, to talk about me. But she's never, she's always been supportive. She's always been like a mother. She's always looking out for me. She doesn't even need to tell me that she's looking out for me. When I started um, engaging for the primaries, look, the calls she made, even to people that I thought I was okay with, who became hostile the minute they realized I had that ambition. Please calls to them. Even when some of those people were behaving contrary to the assurance they had given her. I didn't even go back to her that this person, forget it too. They are doing the worst. No, because I took from what I had learned from her, stay the course, be focused, show results, and the people themselves will see you are good for it. The second person is Hajia What Samira. gives you the strength? Is the when, strength? When the I'm, and I'm coming to it. The person yes, trust um, yeah. in also fights for you. For you, But yes. what sometimes can break you it is when that person does otherwise. Yes, and it, it, it can be very. It can be. Happens a lot. Yes. It can be. It can mm. be painful. And it, I also come to Hajia Samira Baumia. Hajia has not been. It's not just the position she occupies as a second lead. I remember on two occasions, something she said to me, which literally <coughs> validated or gave me more confidence in what I was doing. Often we feel that people are not watching what we do or what we see or how we conduct ourselves. And I won't say those two things here. Maybe in the future when I write my book. But she's such a rock, such a big sister. And as far as the politics is concerned, I'm happy I'm on the same side with them. Yeah. I come to Honorable Freema, um, as we love to call her, our mummy, Auntie Freema, the first female chief of staff of the Republic. She has a lot on her plate. She has a lot to juggle. She has a lot to deal with. And like Margot said, the, the consideration will not be because you're a female. You just need to deliver. Yeah. Whenever I've had the opportunity to speak to her on a challenge, and I don't do this often because, you know, people are so busy and have their own, so you don't, <laughs> you don't keep putting your own personal issues yeah. on them. But on the times that I wasn't even there to let her know what my interest was, she was fighting for me. And when it comes to inclusion... She's a symbol of that. Mm. When it comes to inclusion, the first lady is a symbol of that. When it comes to inclusion, the, f the second lady is a symbol of that. Always fighting for women. 
Because it's not easy how political parties, especially in developing countries, start off. They have put so much into the party. And sometimes it pains me that there are people they've mentored who have actually given up. And that's the pain of mentorship. You'd mentor somebody, you have hopes of them becoming even better than you, and they decide this journey is not mine anymore, and they opt out. And there's nothing you can do about it. So sometimes even mentors shy away from bringing new people into their mm -hmm. spaces just because of how they'll turn out mm -hmm. in the end. <clears throat> Honorable um, Esla Ikufu, during my primaries, in fact, I didn't have the opportunity to sit with her to outline my vision, but through phone calls and text messages when I could, right? Mm -hmm. But in the week of the election, <coughs> she had a conversation with me which literally empowered me, honey, to realize that they, at the time, they went through their challenges. They had their peculiarities. In fact, people were more unfiltered in their attacks on them as women than they are now. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I think it's a bit measured. Here on your set, if you recall, she had a very unfortunate altercation with um, my other brother on the other end who said unprintable things about her at the time. But she dealt with it. The thing, when you say sticks and stones may break your bones, but words can only hurt you. As if, if the insults that they, they hell at you online would leave marks on your face, you'd quit, you'd quit mm. this job or whatever. But they walked the path so we might also follow. They cleared the path so we might also follow. And it behoves on us to also occupy the space and mentor others to come through as well. Honorable Natoshi. Now, another busy, committed, fantastic woman whose commitment to the party I is un unwavering. Today. She was looking ravishing. Amazing. And yes. I when, don't know what was. In fact, when it I comes to the, all of them, somehow she was looking so different. Knowing what to wear, where to wear it. Like, it's, it's just an added, you know, um, bit of what they embody. Honorable Natoshi, former. Um, Parliamentary, a member of parliament. She's a lawyer as well. I think she's even a member of FIDA. I won't be surprised. She's a member of FIDA, yeah. FIDA's agenda is, is. She was moving that agenda. No, she wasn't moving. <laughs> they want their member who is closer to the office to also oh. occupy. And I'm, I mean, it's not, it's not a bad course. It's, it's not out of place. I'm writing it's not, the list. It's not out of place. You're writing the list there. <laughs> okay. At all. And there are several women that. Um, um, Honorable Lydia Alassan. Fantastic. Look. I draw strength from her in particular, given what she faced in Parliament after she lost her partner as well and what she faced in there. For the women, guess what? You always have to, and this is a harsh reality, always have to imagine the worst scenario ever, which won't be of your doing. The most embarrassing, humiliating episode ever, which you would experience. And you have to just hold yourself together, regardless of what is going through and pull yourself through it. That's what Madame Lydia Alassan did, yes. But not everybody has the opportunity to do that. And that is why when women are given certain opportunities, the burden of responsibility is higher on us because you can't count enough of us at the table. You can't count enough of us at leadership taking, um, uh, and leadership making positions. In the private sector, I'm happy to see women leading telcos. I'm happy to see women um, leading investment banking firms, and um, banking and all that. Um, when it came to Guinness Ghana, literally top level, all women but taking ask, decisions. At, at what point will women um, admit that, oh, okay, now we have been recognized? At what point? No, 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 no. And you relax. Because at the end of the day. Hold on. You, <laughs> let, me, let, me, no, let me explain my point. You have mentioned quite a number of women who are in very reputable positions. Yeah. And they are in banking, they are, they are everywhere, right. everywhere. And I think in Ghana, the only area that a woman has not been able to the vice is the vice, vice and the president. Yeah. The rest, chief justice, chief of staff, Speaker parliament, of they are everywhere. Well, it's a fight. And it's, it, it, it only takes a matter, of, it's a matter of time that we will only see that, okay, mm -hmm. now we are. So at what point are we going to see that, oh, yeah, now we're there? Honey, uh, hey, are you no, taking no, no. my time? Let, let her oh, respond and then I'll let you. I think that w the pinnacle of realizing that we have arrived will be when we have a first female president of the Republic of Ghana. 
Are you sure? The, yes, I think that would be like the biggest glass ceiling shattered. Um, no, not the, the president. I said president of the Republic oh, of Ghana. Okay, okay. I that would be the pinnacle. Vice president. Okay. No, 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 no. The vice president is a step. Um, they are attempting that, although we know it won't go anywhere. But it's a good move. It spells, it sends signals out mm. there. Ghanaians will decide. Um, and and yes, Ghanaians will decide, but um, as it is now, it's not because they, they are choosing just because of the female factor. It's a combination of both, the principal and the running mate and what they bring to the table. But I think that when we get to that level where a female is bold enough to say that, regardless of what <coughs> we said about me, because like she said, those tags exist to the point where somebody comments that, if she had been a political oh, figure, yeah. it would mean that she have skeletons in her closet. What does that mean if you put her out there? It, it's a certain bias and a certain conditioning in people's minds. Like, you meet somebody and you say, Hey, cozy, what you are doing? Hey, I don't know how you do it. Too. Hey, you are bold. Oh. And, and it's like, what are we doing? We are passionate about politics. We are yeah. passionate about seeing transformation. We are passionate about helping people. And we sacrifice our time and energy to sit here. It might not, you, you, you might not see its direct impact on you personally, but it's, a, it's inspiring a lot of young women and men to take up action and to do the best they can. We, en, we may not be perfect at it, but as we lead this charge, others will also follow. So for me, when we eventually get that, that is when I believe that it would actually mm. spell. Uh, <coughs> but before that, there will be certain achievements the affirmation, um, sorry, the affirmative action bill being passed, seeing uh, almost an even number of men and women in parliament. Mm. I, I, I live to see that. And that would mean transformation in leaps and bounds. That's honestly what I believe. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, uh, um, Margot, Annie. you can, you, just briefly. Yes. Unfortunately, that fight depends on you. Even though yeah. there's a he for she, they still won't fight for you. They will expect so that you will come that forward. One, that one is true. I mean, but political parties have done what sometimes they give us quota and all that. And, you know, because they know there's a deficiency in the numbers. That is why they also do things to encourage us. On the day Professor Nana was mentioned, a journalist interviewed me at the party headquarters. And the question was, are we ready for a female president as a country? I said, Ghana is ready for a human being president. And both male and female are human beings. I don't know why we need to discriminate because... So we, the media, sometimes we feed into the narrative, no? Exactly. Because the question, like... People were even asking about are we ready for a female president and all that, like, and age. You see, as young as 40, people are dying. As old as 100, people are dying. The Bible said, do not think about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. I think we need to leave the moment. And a woman is a human being. As a man is a human being. All that women are calling for. And we are not calling for anything out of the blue or out of the world. We are calling for normal rights, which is a human right. Mm. <clears throat> and with, whether we are there or not, and we have the majority. So if parliament has 100 women, it shouldn't be out of place. If Parliament has 200 women representing us, it shouldn't be out of place. So we must work hard, get ourselves prepared to meet the opportunity as Professor Nana Jane has. You know, she prepared herself unknowingly. The opportunity came, she took it. So every woman out there, I don't think Professor Nana ever dreamt of. Because I, you, I know a journalist, I, she was my mate when we were in school. She keep asking, and Vincent too was my mate. So Vincent and I, uh, Vincent uh, at Sifua. Mm -hmm. Vincent and I were always, you know, MPP and this, that kind. And she was like, hey, Meg, how do you do this? Today, she, she, she is doing a morning show and discussing politics. Mm -hmm. So anytime I meet, I'm like, you said you never do politics. But now you are here asking me questions. You understand? So, <laughs> so you know, it, it, don't say never. It's a calling sometimes. And destiny, you can never run away from it. But what is painful is that you don't prepare yourself to meet the destiny. Mm. So wherever you are, whatever trade, whatever business, whatever you find yourself, know that your maker gave you something to come and do to help humanity. Master it. And the mastery will pave way for the opportunities. I am so, so, so happy for Professor Jane Nana because... She's an embodiment of credibility 
honor, respect. And I pray that we all get there. Professor Nana Jane. One day. Yeah. Professor, Nana Professor Nana Jane. Jane Opo she was, she on, you, you know, on, on, on Friday, she was named on uh, Thursday. On Friday morning, we spoke for about 30 minutes. And she told me something that I was so shocked. And it's all because she takes charge of what she does. Mm. She, and that has helped her a so, lot. So Abdaka said something last week on the platform. Yeah. He said, you know this um, talk about 68.5 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. million on Pasco questions. Yeah. He said during her term as education minister, yeah. she created a platform that was a digital platform where the students were able to access past questions, questions. on the platform. I was shocked to the bone. Do you know I she know even know went around, uh, uh, quote unquote, cycle schools yes. and asked the children to write stories? The children wrote the stories. They didn't alter the story. They just, you know, did the In little. The and printed books with, with the names of the kids. I have some, Fonsha. Printed books. Printed of, books. Of stories. Stories. And then say why the, 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 what, the, what, the, what, crocodile, the crap. All those stories. The kids wrote them. And with very lovely books. And the woman takes charge of what she does. Wherever she is, you will know that Professor Nana Jane is here. And you can't take it away from her. Right. She gave me a story that was, I was awed. I mean, imagine you going for a, a, maybe a UN assignment or whatever, and you did not, your, 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 your assistant was somewhere, so you couldn't have your speech. And you, it's your time to talk. You didn't have your speech. But because she wrote her speech, up till now, she said people, they, they still don't believe how she was able to do it. Hmm. Everything she does, she does it her own and owns it. And it is so much of an inspiration for me. We have become too comfortable. And I think as human beings and as women, we should always prepare. Well, let's, let's, uh, I have a few minutes, but I'll give you some few min minutes to also comment on this issue. Akusa, do we have uh, Dumso? Are we in Dumso? <laughs> oh, I think that, I think this is a question that has been a lot of people are asking, but ECG has come out to say, one, recent power challenges has been due to maintenance. Two, that you and I know that we have certain persons stealing cables and wires. I don't even know where they take it. At this point, I think that as much as the Ghana police sets up cameras at certain vantage points, it, when it comes to ECG infrastructure, cameras should also be placed so that we can catch the people doing that. There's also illegal connections. This particular issue, time and time again, even when you setting houses catch fire or whatnot, the trigger has been that an illegal connection with the wiring causing problems. I was at a funeral in the constituency two weeks ago. While sitting, um, there was a tent outside of the church. While sitting there, a cable started, you know, sparking, and. It literally, I mean, the most shocking thing, when we say education is important, somebody took, was carrying like, what looked like a metal rod to go and hit the thing. You can imagine touching a live wire with that metallic thing. But long story short, you could tell that something had, that connection wasn't from ECG. So they had done their own rewiring, whatever, to, to, to get electricity. But those also cause challenges and overburden the grid because what they have as fully seen will be different from the um, illegal connections made. That being said, I remember last year, I think it was last year, when we were agitating for um, a timetable of sorts because people felt it was. They gave the scheduling for the maintenance. They gave, it was at about three weeks, if I recall. <coughs> but I mean, depending on where you live, sometimes you won't experience it as others are. I think Saturday, Dan Suman, it was because of social media, everybody was posting it. Some parts of Kumasi, um, some parts of Greater Accra were reporting that the light had gone off and were asking that if uh, it's going to be n the norm, then a timetable comes out. I want to believe that it's not, and I want to believe that. It is the routine 
maintenance as well as fixing problems that they might have experienced or have noticed is important that that is done. And once they get it out of the way, we we'll have a seamless um, use of power as we've had in the last seven years. Let's assume because we've had issues with IPPs, we've had issues with generation, we've had issues with the legacy death, we've had issues with um, uh, uh, ESLA, questions are being asked and all that. Let's assume mm -hmm. it is maintenance. How do I go home uh, Friday night? My light is off. All the way into Saturday evening. The light didn't come off until Saturday evening. Nobody told me that there is maintenance in my area. I Nobody agree. told me there, Honey, there is stealing cables. If it's maintenance work, let people know that. Where, where do you live? Uh, La Chibi area. Really okay, so yeah, actually, I don't yeah. like saying it. So you live at uh, La Dade Kotopon. On this date, and this is not new to ECG, Great Co. and Co. They've given us that timetable before and they stuck to it. Let people know that this is what you're doing so people can plan their lives better. If it's going to be a long period and you do not have a generator, maybe you can even go and spend the, the, the weekend at another um, your family relations end or something. Some people are doing write, writing theses and need power. Now, mm -hmm. the gig economy, people are working with their phones and laptops and need power and um, Wi-Fi connections. So <coughs> let's be mindful of the effects it has on the citizenry and give a timetable so, so, this is what President so that said. people would um, be comfortable in knowing what to expect Okay. day in day out as they go about their lives. Mm. I, had, I had two different, different <coughs> reports from him. He, he was touring the northern part of the country. I think today he's starting a greater a, a greater Accra region happened, tour. So this is what he said. Former President uh, John Dramani Mahama, flag bearer of the opposition party, uh, has suggested that although his honesty is a great virtue, his decision to be honest about every single uh, every struggle the country was facing under his tenure may have been one of the major challenges of his government. Mr. Mahama emphasized that the importance of elected officials being forthright with electorate to build trust credibility. Uh, he expressed concerns about the current government's lack of transparency, particularly regarding the recent power challenges, suggesting that they may be withholding information from the public. I was brought up to tell the truth at all times. Uh, so when I was president, if things were not going well, I told the people of Ghana and what uh, we were trying to do about it. I think my honesty was one of the major problems I had because I didn't think that I should fool my people, he said. So former President Mahama reiterated his stance, stating, uh, unfortunately, others have different intentions. He maintained his assertion that the current government is withholding crucial information from the public, citing recent development in the power sector as evidence quote we know that there are sh they are shedding load they have a problem with generation some generation assets are down they have problem with paying for gas every day they are shedding between 280 and 480 megawatts of power but they will not give us the timetable because that is what Ghanaians know as do so, he said. Honey, first of all, that is a very dishonest claim. It's a bold, bare-faced lie. I recall when he Which was one, president. No, the bit about um, he was honest, honest with yeah. the citizenry about the challenges and the expectation. He wasn't. In fact, if I would recall, there were four or five different timelines he himself gave personally to the end of Dumso. Mm -hmm. And every time that happened, mm -hmm. we didn't see an end. Mm. To the point where even the minister of um, um, power. Um, power then, what's his name? I keep forgetting his name because um, his face doesn't oh. quite register. Oh, um, I, I keep forgetting his yes. image. Even he had to take the fall because mm. the deadline they gave for the end of it Kwam didn't, ma didn't materialize. So if he comes to say that he was honest about it, <laughs> Mr. John Mahama, and I don't even want to address you personally. You were not honest about it. You gave several different timelines. And each time that um, um, deadline showed up, you had a different excuse as to why 
um, um, it hadn't been solved. In fact, if you remember, one of the things that they, 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 they tout themselves for, especially with that fictitious claim of fixing Dumso, is when they said that their married deal was their own. Don't forget that that was signed as an emergency agreement. Mm -hmm. Emergency. Mm -hmm. and an emergency takes how many days? Ah, so as quickly as you can. It took about a year for us to even see those um, power badges. But my point is, if you are going to make the claim that he's being dishonest, at least we can reference your tenor. Every time you gave that deadline, we still sat in darkness. In fact, we sat in darkness <laughs> to hear <laughs> the deadlines being pushed back, back, back and back and back and back. I agree with the public Don't you sentiment think that, is that because we had a very critical problem within the power sector that spans way back even before Mahama came into office. The, the, the power, of, um, the conversation about capacity, is one that both governments have all through from even Lamont's time. Mm -hmm. Some extension has been made, even as we speak. A conversation of the rural elef electrification is back on the table because. They're saying communities that are still springing up and you have to ensure that they get electricity. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the public sentiment, and I align with it, that there are routine maintenance or some challenges that are had that is being experienced. Put the timetable out so that I know that on this date, when I have lectures in this particular area, there will be no electricity and there's no backup generator. So maybe so as, a, as a lecturer, let me move my students to Zoom and advise them to connect at a certain a different location. So, so, so what you're saying is that we do not have a problem with gas purchase. We don't have problem with debts to IPPs. We don't have problems with all the issues of generation. It's a problem generally that has to do with maintenance. I mean, official it has to do with as illegal I, connections. I'm not going to deal with speculation and rumor mongering or hearsay. Official positions, as stated by ECG, as stated by Gridco, has been explicit. Okay. If you have any other reasons ascribed to it, let me see the official documentation on that. Okay. Yes, we do know that in the past, those sort of challenges that lasted over four years was, uh, was as a result of debt. That's, that's 36 months of being incapable of solving that problem. But now, as we speak, we have enjoyed uninterrupted power supply, at least in the seven years, to the point where when lights go off for even 30 minutes, Ghanaians are shocked and can't even handle it. That is progress. So then again, it behoves on us to, be, to do our part and effectively communicate the challenges. Right. Give the timetable and then people will be, will be okay so they plan their lives around that challenge. Not everybody has a generator. No, not everybody has a battery, um, those terminals that people okay. buy and whatnot. All right. Regardless of the propaganda that may be had on it, under his tenor, and that was his legacy. Dumso was his cross to bear. Did he solve it he did he not. He did not solve it. That is a so you is, a, is a fiction of his of their imagination. It's something they love to see, and they 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 they, they, they hold on to to lies. No, but like but, uh, um, uh, 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 like Vice President said it. Like a bulldog on the, a bone. But it, it happens. He said it. Where he said on joy that, that you do not have to give credit to Mahama for solving Dumso. He, he said you don't have to what, give, give credit. credit to Mahama. For, oh, you, I should play the video. He said we do not have to give credit to yes, Mahama. Yes, yes but for then solving true, he didn't solve Dumso. If mm -hmm. Vice President said you do not have to give credit to Mahama for solving Dumso, who was he giving credit to? So, to our administration, for, right? For doing what? So your administration <laughs> did what? No, you, you, read, uh, you just stated something, and I don't recall hearing I, that. I get your interpretation to that statement, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that. So if you solved it, what did you do in solving it? Um, okay, so first of all, let's get back to the conversation of what Dumso was. What was Dumso? What caused Dumso? No, if, if Dumso was about debt, why did he take four, four years pay debt? And how is it that we have been able to maintain financing a debt, including legacy debt, for at least seven years? If then that wasn't done, then it means that that tag, which they hate the most, okay. still lingers. Okay, I, I, I don't have a lot of time, so let me allow Mago. Mago, I'll short change you a bit. I'm sorry. Yeah, Annie, don't worry. But uh, Ghanaians are leaving the doom so. It's not about what we sit here to say. And from 2017, when life goes on for even a minute, Ghanaians were surprised because they knew President Mahama saw doom so before we exited office. That's a fact. And 
you cannot wake someone who is pretending to sleep up. I'm quoting Lara too. She used to say that a lot. So they can be pretending to sleep. Nobody's going to wake them up. But any Ghanaians are having the experience. Imagine closing from work without any information. You get home. Any, especially we the women, the lights are off and the next day, everything you have kept in your fridge, you have to throw them in the bin. Look at how much expensive foodstuffs are. Then you come to cook and an irresponsible government will not even communicate to you. Spoils your food and you throw them into the bin. Then the net, they need to struggle and get, look for money and put food on the table. Ghanaians are the living testimonies. Whether President Muhammad saw doom saw or not, the Ghanaian who voted in 2020, 2016, will vote in 2024. We do not need to tell them whether they have light or not. They have the experience. And it is so very nauseating and very, very appalling to look into their eyes and lie to them. That is very painful because on this Metro TV platform, we've had several interviews with your boss and these IPPs, their issues and stuff, where they need to even go and be begging as ugly plans and blah, 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 begging the IPPs. If it was about begging, why? Hmm. Ghanaians could have begged themselves. We voted people into office for solutions. So, you see, these guys are having a certain reality. And, Annie, if you are wearing a, a blue shirt, they can tell you that your shirt is red and constantly tell you your shirt is red. If you don't take it, you question your sanity, whether you are really wearing red or it's a blue. But, you see, the Ghanaian that is living with it, and the comments that are on the street, even in Excel areas, lights can go off for over 24 hours. So when you sit here and you rap, when you sit here and you give them stories, it is with them. And they will, they will give you answers on the polls, mm -hmm. December 7th. You asked, what did they do to solve them so? And they are talking about what? Legacy debt, paying legacy. Which government did not pay legacy debt? We asked the energy minister, Peter Mehu then, have you added even one megawatt of power? He said no. Chairman Sabonsu said that Doom Sobaya, President Mahama Traya, and Osovi, but it was expensive. It solved. But I said, Why are you crediting Mahama for solving Doom Sobaya? Because he created it. As Siva, he asked Ghanaian's population to increase from where Akosomo Dam was. <coughs> but you see, the ordinary Ghanaian is not interested in our banter. What they are looking for is results. And Kindly or unfortunately enough, President Kufuado and Dr. Baumia and their team have proven that they have come to waste our eight years. They are not results oriented. They have taken this country backwards by every sector, every metric, everything you want to measure this government with. They have failed and failed beyond in every sense of the way. The experiences are with, with Ghanaians. So we need not to talk much, but there mm. is doom. So even when the president sucks, in Parliament and was saying he has kept the lights on. At that very moment, lights were out. Mm. There's no doom. So there, there is doom. Be so a, there and, be a and, and it's because of the indiscipline. Annie, as I've President, sent, Ma please, please, my a story. As President, as President Mahama said, area. be honest enough there with your citizens. No so. And you see, there is no honesty because no they, so. they, they, they clearly do not Ghanians respect Ghanaians. The please, please control it. They clearly. They so clearly they do not I respect mean, the mm, citizens. Mm. And if you respect your citizens, you will be candid enough, you will be honest, and at least tell them the problem and give them solutions. Yeah. At least the timetable would have been better. So, Ani, it is because of the disrespect. That is why they are so dishonest, because they cannot. They are not sleeping in darkness okay, as we are. So look at the class and look at the difference. Mm. So they don't feel what the Ghanaian is feeling, but the population... So, I mean, so, the majority. So, so, so I do so. Would have so Mark, doom Mark so if you see, we appreciate okay, you Annie, being with us almost please, every story every dawn. I, uh, I have lots of stories here that I want to, uh, that I want to read to you. Mahama would have I have lots of stories. If NDC was but we have said President Mahama. President Mahama saw doom so. George Nakoli himself also said. Annie, when your light goes off, do you think about President Mahama? Unless that's Did you vote? Is President Mahama the president of this country? So Ghanaians are experiencing it. Keep telling them stories. You make them as a whole. 
So Mark from USA said that let's focus let's let's focus on promoting Okay, let's focus on promoting. Oh, uh, can you allow me to read? I'm reading just the last part of Mark Mark's Mark's message. So so uh, Mark says that let's focus on promoting positive and inclusive narratives that celebrate women's achievements and foster solidarity rather than perpetuating harmful stereotypes. Mark from USA. Your message is long. I just chose the last part of it. Uh, you know, yes, to read it. So thank you. Uh, yes, because uh, mm, because you are women. My time is up. Let me just take another breather. I'll be back shortly. give you what's trending and Harry is with me you're welcome good Thank afternoon you very much Annie and uh, I, I want to read live mm. uh, from Facebook some mm. of the comments that are coming in you better screen them <laughs> <laughs> I'll try I'll try but this one says that uh, okay uh, what's wrong with that okay Mm, so you said I should screen them. So mm, let me better let me fix the economy. NPP. The, the city is thirteen Ghana cities to a dollar. Ghanaians aren't awake enough. These guys in government came to loot for themselves, family and friends. They have chopped all the money, and they are now telling us an answer stories. The NPP isn't a party for the people, but a few selfish guys driven by tribalism and greed. Okay, this one is saying something about Kusia, but um. I cannot, I cannot, um, I mean, talk about it. But let me, let me pick a few more comments and then, mm -hmm. okay. It, it seems a lot of people are attacking our course here. So, Annie. Attack, they can't read it. But <laughs> Ambassador Santiago says that whoever is behind the unending story of President Mills is not only wicked, but dangerous. People mock the health of Professor Mills. Professor Mills died, and some media people allow themselves to be used to create mischief with the health and death of Professor Mills, even 12 years after. Yeah. So, what is at stake now? Who killed John Kuma, he says, and nobody, and so nobody will be allowed to be uh, of Sue's Kate and the, uh, the death of John Kuma. So, uh, Akusha Menu, for your information, Professor Mills and a fant is a fanti and therefore belongs to his ma maternal family of Cape Coast. Mm. It's only his father's family who comes from a Kunfi Ucham. So, uh, uh, that's uh, just a bit about you know we had a conversation about yeah the and that was also and trending a lot of people were saying that it's poison because of what Captain Smart said some mm -hmm. are also saying that it's not a poison that he's been sick for a while mm -hmm. now some are saying that it's cancer what actually brought about the discussion <laughs> is the fact that the wife yes uh, who is another widow is mm -hmm. now speaking yes and that is a little frustrating frustrating you know? I think mm -hmm. it's it's out of frustration mm -hmm. and we can understand her that her husband is dead and she needs to come out to talk about it yes and the, the afghan games is still ongoing ghana has won a few medals but not so encouraging and that is also trending as well and it's unfortunate that we did a lot it's not encouraging that we've won some we've not medals. we've not won a lot compared to i mean as the host country we, we should win more medals what do you win expect? more win more gold how do you want to win it <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You should even be proud that at least we won some gold. Okay. I'm looking so for the details. So we should settle. Of, eh? Yes. It, we should it, settle for the silver oh and no, the, the I'm bronze. I'm not saying we should settle, but yes, Ghana's win threat into me yeah. has secured team the teams Ghana's that's the team yeah. Ghana's first medal as ongoing Africa Games, mm -hmm. clinging to the silver on the women's 46 kilogram weight lifted category. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, silver, silver, silver. To, uh, beyond the snatch discipline discipline yeah and she also excelled in the clean jerk contribution mm -hmm. to her impressive total score and uh, in total in Tumi scored two silver medals and one gold marking a significant milestone for both herself and Ghana and the gentleman that who who had to uh, drop out of out of the cycling competition because his his motor <laughs> his bicycle had a fault is also trending as well. I don't know whether if you saw that one. Yes, but it he is says still, that they were carried yeah. to the grounds on the bucket of their <laughs> I don't know manager or some somebody. So it's, it's still ongoing. But they I was don't have expecting a, a lot of traction for this African Games, but uh, it's not really that. That our leg gave us traction. 
Yes. At least. I mean, we have to give it to him. SM for life. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yanni, unfortunately, this is where I end with that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. All right. So, um, we'll just end by letting you know that whatever information that you have, information, social media should not really lead you so much to say things you don't have to say. Yeah. Let, let's just measure a little bit with some of the information we receive. We know that some of you have first-hand information. Yes, we know. But keep screen, screen them a bit. Oh, don't keep it to yourself. Actually, we too want to gossip. <laughs> so don't keep it to yourself. But screen is more right. All right. So that's where we end. We, we open the show this week. And we're back tomorrow with Good Morning Ghana. Thanks for watching.